going on, horror lovers, horror brothers and sisters? Let's talk about 30 horror movies that I watched this month. From worst to best, the worst one, number 30. I think this is the most I've ever had in these monthly rankings. So I watched a lot this month. And I did watch other movies. I don't just watch horror. Some of these, you could argue, aren't horror, but whatever. Number 30 for worst horror movie I watched this month is Prophecy 5. I have a review for it, so just... Here are my thoughts there. I'm not going to waste time talking about it again because I don't want to talk about these movies. Number 29, Prophecy 4. Same thing. Check out my review. Uh, you'll hear all my full thoughts right there. And next up, number 28, is Prophecy 3. Go watch my review. This one's not as painful as the other two below it, but it's still not a good movie. Very cheap looking, very awful. So next up, number 27, Slumber Party Massacre 3. This one said, hey, let's get rid of that fun approach that the first two had. You know, more tongue-in-cheek, more comedy, you know, horror comedy, and just let's not have fun with it anymore. Let's do this mystery whodunit uh, route and have the worst red herrings ever and have the killer be so goddamn obvious and we'll have cutaway kills, no gore, and just awful acting, awful everything. It's the worst of the trilogy. Again, I have a review. Check out all my thoughts there. But I just gave you basically the gist of it. Those are my main thoughts about the movie. It's just just so goddamn awful. Now, the next one, number 26, will be The Last Broadcast. Now, this is decent. Um, This is supposed to be like the first found footage movie. It, It came out like a year or two before The Blair Witch, which I still haven't seen that. I need to get on that. This one tells a weird the story about like these guys that go missing and the, this guy's making a documentary about their disappearance and then there's a little twist at the end that was okay. I wasn't a fan of the way this movie looked. It it looks pretty dated and very cheap. Like this is very low budget. This is as low budget as it gets. So know that going in, but the story was slightly intriguing but not really that much intriguing. It was just a lot of interviews. But it's still better than the Prophecy movies. <laughs> Anything's better than those. Now, the next one is the last movie I just watched this month, and that is the Netflix original. I think it's a Netflix original. Eli. The first two-thirds of this movie are just so paint-by-numbers, haunted house movie, same scares, something pops up, boo, something's hiding behind the curtain. They do the same tricks again and again and again. It's very laughable. Like, really, we're doing this again? Just nothing original here. And then you get to the third act where there's this twist. And the twist didn't really save the movie, but it didn't hurt it either. It's like, oh, well, that's fine. At least that's here. Otherwise, it would just be like the first two thirds, mediocre and very blah. The, the last act is really the only thing that kind of helped the movie from being wasted time. This movie was fine. It, it looks good. The acting's fine. So this is a well-made movie, but it's just so paint by numbers. Next up, number 24, will be House 4. The biggest issues I have with this movie is its confusing continuity issues. They bring back William Cat from the first movie to play the same character, but I'm guessing in an alternate universe where he has a different child. But then I read into it, apparently they had casted the movie, they wrote the movie, and then it was like a last second thing, like, hey, let's throw William Cat in here. It doesn't make sense, though. If It just does not line up with the first movie. Like, they're trying to make it a direct sequel to that, but it's like a whole new house, whole new family. It doesn't work. So, fuck that. You know how much I like continuity, and that completely ruins the continuity. And it has a very uneven tone. I wish they would have went the comedy route did a lot more of the piece of guy stuff. There's some highlights in the movie for sure, but it does have like a made for TV quality and look to it. Just not that great of a movie, but it definitely has some fun moments in it that saved it for me. Next up, number 23 is another found footage movie called As Above, So Below. This has Rishi from Friday the 13th, the remake. And this one uses that stupid found footage camera glitch trope and all those found footage movies where the camera starts like glitching and it's just overused in this movie the first two thirds of this movie felt like a uncharted video game or like a tomb raider movie it's just like they're exploring and it it felt very much like that like 
this main character felt like she was like Lara Croft. And but then the third act is when it becomes more of a horror movie. And they're like seeing hallucinations and this whatever it is that they're in, like this area knows their fears and it's like fucking with them. And it's fine. It's just kind of mediocre. Not, not very memorable. It's kind of forgettable, but a decent movie. Uh, if you like found footage, check it out. Next up, hey, we're back to the Prophecy movies. Prophecy 2. This one actually was entertaining somewhat. I really liked Christopher Walken in this movie, him and Brittany Murphy, some of the comedy in it. It actually landed for me. There's some neat little practical effects here and there. It just worked the best out of the franchise for me, and that's why it's all the way up here. Number 21 goes to Poltergeist 3. This one is the skyscraper one, and it's got Tom Skerritt and that actress from Robocop and those Brian De Palma films. I'm blanking on her name right now, but this one's fine, but it does a lot of the same tricks again and again. There's a lot of like mirror scares and the bad guy in the mirror coming in. It's very ambitious. There's a lot of cool practical effects in the movie. It's entertaining, but it's nowhere near the best Poltergeist film. Number 20 will go to a movie that should have been way better because of its writer and director and the cast, and that is Velvet Buzzsaw. This movie gets very weird at times, but unfortunately not enough. This movie is very serious, it's supernatural, and it just should have been a lot better. Like, Jake Gyllenhaal is great in this. I like his character. He's, he's, a, he's a critic, and he's always critiquing things, even f people's funerals at inappropriate times. He's funny. But the story of what's going on is very just uninteresting and just not really explored that much. There's a couple of cool death sequences, but there's no gore or anything. Tony Collette's in here. She's got the best death in the movie. And the title is very interesting going in. Like, oh, Velvet Buzzsaw. How's that going to tie into the flick? Like, what's that going to mean? Like, what's that? And they never show a buzzsaw that I know of. Like, what's Velvet Buzzsaw? It's like a tattoo or something. It's just, it's an interesting title. But I, it's like a movie that they came up with the title before they wrote the movie. That's what it feels like. Number 19 will go to Dario Gento's Tenebrae. Tenebra. This has John Saxon. It's got a crazy ending. Lots of blood. And just lots of screaming. It feels like the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You got this chick just screaming bloody murder as the credits start rolling. And the music's better than some of the other Argento films. I really like the music in this film. And there's gratuitous nudity. There's a chick that is literally just walking around her apartment butt-ass naked with, like, just a bed sheet around her just letting one tit hang out. It's just so gratuitous. And there's some graphic kills. There's some plot conveniences for sure. Like, a dog chases this girl randomly. Just this dog that seems to be possessed because of how evil it is chases this girl to the killer's house and she is connected to the guy that the killer is after very convenient but yeah just a fun uh italian horror flick next up we got another found footage movie it's called willow creek this is a bigfoot movie you got this couple and one of them's a skeptic she doesn't believe in bear uh, i keep wanting to say barefoot bigfoot and then the other one wants to prove that bigfoot is real I should just say Sasquatch, because every time I try to say Bigfoot, I want to say Barefoot. But yeah, I like the characters. That's what really saved this movie, because not a whole lot happens. Like, almost nothing really happens. It's just these two people in the woods, camping. They hear things. They don't really see things. It's just they hear things, and that's the terror. Like, when they're in the tent at night, and they're just listening to what's out there, everything's up to your imagination. You're like, what is out there? Is it Bigfoot? Or is it just somebody else? But the main two characters in this movie, I really like them as a couple and their dynamic and some of their their moments together. They're very sweet. I really like them. Number 17 will go to Poltergeist 2, The Other Side. This movie, for some reason, didn't even mention the daughter. Like, the daughter's missing. I thought that was odd. I read that there was supposed to be a scene in the movie where they addressed it like she's at college. But it's like they go from one where they have two daughters and a son, and then in two, they just have a son and daughter, and the daughter, the other daughter is just missing. They don't ever talk about her. Maybe they did, and I missed it, but 
that just kind of bugged me when I was watching it. This one has a really rough ending when they're like in the other dimension. It just looks odd. It's very dated, some of the effects, but it's got some good moments. I like the father in this movie, Craig T. T. Nelson. He's a lot more goofy than he was in the first one. You got Tangina back. You got the Native American guy from the Cuckoo's Nest, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. And it's a fine movie. It's definitely not as good as the first one. I don't think anything will ever compete with the original, but it's a decent watch. Next up, we got the remake of Suspiria. This is a very split film. It's two and a half hours long. So it's either going to be very boring or it's just going to be very mesmerizing. You're going to be sucked into it and just mesmerized by the style of it and the performances and the story. The story is kind of close to the original. This one's very its own thing. Like it's The only thing that it borrows from the original is that there's a dance school in Berlin. And spoiler alert, because it's more of a twist at the end of the original, there's witches. Like in the original Suspiria, like the fact that there's witches was more like a mystery. Like you found that out at the end of the movie. But in this remake, they tell you that they're witches in the first act. It's very quick. You see Chloe Grace Moretz. She's at like a therapist office and she's like, there are witches. And then you see like witchcraft throughout the movie, like impossible things happening. This movie has one of probably my favorite dance scene in the film ever. That dance scene with the woman getting all bent and just bones cracking. What a brutal scene. There is gratuitous nudity at the end, like a whole room of naked people. If you can't make it through this film because it's like too slow or something, and it did drag a few times for me, but if you just want to see a crazy scene, go to like the last 20 minutes of the movie. So like act six, because this movie is broken up into six acts and then an epilogue. Go to act six, watch that, and then watch that dance scene that I was talking about. Number 15 will be George Romero's Day of the Dead. This movie is extremely graphic at times. It has some of Tom Savini's best work when it comes to practical effects and gore, it's awesome looking. People getting ripped apart and people who you want to see die. There's annoying characters and racist characters. You're just like, I want that person dead. And when they do die, you're like, yes. It's got Bub, one of the most iconic zombie characters ever. We don't usually get a zombie character like this in zombie movies. They're usually all nameless and this guy has a name and a personality and the performance by that guy was pretty good. And the main couple in this movie, like if they didn't say it out loud, I wouldn't know they were a couple. There's like no good chemistry between them from the get go. They don't set these characters up that well as a couple. I'm just like, I don't care about them. Number 14 will be Wolf Creek. I already reviewed this movie. So if you want to hear my thoughts on it, go check that out. It's an Australian slasher movie based on true events. Next up, we got Lake Mungo. This is another like found footage documentary style film with a somewhat intriguing story about what happened to this missing girl. or she's not, She was missing for a few days, and then she was dead. How did she die? Is she haunting the family now? And it's just got some very eerie moments, especially towards the end with the photographs and showing you like the ghosts that were in the pictures and the videos that you didn't see. I thought all that was really chilling. Next up, we got Feedback. This is a movie about a radio DJ and two guys come in with shotguns and masks and they take him hostage and they want him to say this speech and they want they want to control him and make him like confess the things and this other guy it gets crazy pretty quick it's very fast paced very thrilling it gets kind of brutal at times and it's got Richard Brake number 11 will be Wolf Creek 2 I already got a review for this one too coming out so check that out for all my full thoughts. Really like this movie. It's really gory. It really just turns, it dials it to 11. Like from one to two, slightly different tone, more gore, more fun. Number 10, I think we're at. This is Witchboard. I think there's a two and a three. I haven't seen those. And this one I really enjoyed. My favorite character in this movie is that medium chick, Sarah Beth. I just thought she was hysterical. She made me laugh quite a few times. Then you got the sergeant from Child's Play 3, so that's one of my favorite movies ever. Love Child's Play 3, very nostalgic. This movie even has like a small twist that was unexpected towards the end, and some like moments that kind of felt like something out of The Omen or a Final Destination movie where things are kind of like moving on their own, and then like 
setting up traps and things falling on people. It kind of felt like something out of like the omen. I mean, and it's also really good character development and drama between these characters. They're really well fleshed out. Like I like these characters. So I really enjoyed Witchcraft. I liked it way more than I thought I would. Next up, number nine will be Dream Home. This is a Chinese slasher movie about a woman who really wants this apartment. It's her dream home and she'll do anything to get it, including going on a very nasty, disturbing killing spree, killing anybody, even if they're pregnant. Like, this movie goes for it. It doesn't shy away. The gore is on screen. The kills are mean-spirited. It's very, very messed up. And I love, I love that. And, like, this is a slasher movie with a plot. Like, it actually fleshes out this killer like we focus on the killer the whole movie we find out about her childhood what brought her to this point what's going on between her and her dad everything so it's not like a typical slasher where it's just the kills and dumb teenagers getting like this is a different type of slasher next up number eight will be the devil all the time this is a very new netflix original movie with a tremendous cast and a story that isn't very like linear either it kind of jumps all over the place just like dream home and I already have a review on it, so check out my review if you want to hear my thoughts. Number seven will be Cargo. This is another Netflix movie. This is like a zombie post-apocalyptic world in Australia. There's zombies, and some of them are like burying their heads in the sand. <laughs> it's a very unique zombie movie, and it's all about a dad and his baby. The dad gets infected, and he has 48 hours until he officially turned to get his baby to safety. He needs to find some tribe, someone, some place where his baby can be safe once he's gone. So you're just rooting for this guy. It's the cutest baby ever. And it's just such a fun, thrilling movie. So check out Cargo on Netflix. Next up, number six, I think this is also Netflix. And it's called Caliber. This is about two guys who go hunting and then there's an accident. And that's all I'll say. It's like, this is best going in blind, but something happens once they go hunting. And from that moment on, it never lets up. There's all kinds of tension and paranoia, and it just really is dark. It's got dark subject matter for sure. And the third act kind of goes in a place that I was not expecting either. Next up, we got The House's October Built. Very, very awesome uh, found footage movie. I just really liked all these characters. Really liked the premise of the, these people going across country trying to find like the scariest haunted house attraction and they find one that takes things way too far. One that's like real, like they actually get kidnapped. And yeah, I don't want to spoil what happens once they get kidnapped. Check it out. It's very scary. Awesome premise. Next up, we got the original Suspiria. I watched it before I watched the remake. And this one is very rich in atmosphere. It's visually stunning. The music is awesome and mesmerizing. And some shocking and stylish kills for sure. A creepy third act. You know, the twist with the witches. This one is just one of Argento's best films. This was probably, I think this is probably his best. Number three, we'll go to The Babysitter Killer Queen. I really enjoyed this movie. I don't think it's better than the first one, but it's still a good follow-up. It's got a lot of the same style and the same humor, just a little bit further dialed, just a little bit more corny. This one moment that went a little too far for me. I already have a review for this movie as well, so check that out if you want to hear my full thoughts. Number two, we'll go to a werewolf movie that is overlooked. I don't hear anybody talk about it, and that is Late Phases, Night of the Werewolf or something like that, late phases. This has easily one of the best transitions, like transformations, transformations into a werewolf. Like the guy ripping his face, he's like spitting all his teeth out. Awesome. You got Lance Guest from Halloween 2. This movie, the premise is werewolves versus old blind Vietnam War vet. Awesome premise there. And this guy knows how to handle himself. He, he, despite his handicap, he can still take on these werewolves, and it's fucking awesome. It's a little bit of a slow burn, but it's still a great payoff in the end. But my number one will go to I Saw the Devil. You can debate if this is horror or not. It's definitely got some horror elements in it for sure. It's very gruesome. You got a cannibal. You got a rapist serial killer. You got decapitations. It is brutal and bloody as hell. 
and it's a very cathartic revenge movie that kind of has a different spin on the revenge genre and it's beautiful too the cinematography the score is very powerful and the main character is a badass so check out i saw the devil it's a korean flick so it's subtitled but hey get over that watch it all right learn how to read a movie or get a dubbed version if you have to it's worth the watch it's long too i think it's almost two and a half hours but it doesn't feel like it it flies by it's amazing so check out i saw the devil and there you go that's my ranking from worst to best my favorite movie this month is i saw the devil what is your favorite movie you saw this month what are some movies you can recommend to me and what is your favorite movie from my list what's your least favorite let me know and as always if you like what you've seen and you want to see more hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds and until next time i'll feed you